Thank you, Zubin, and welcome to the Hall of Fame series in San Antonio. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Inside the home of the San Antonio Spurs, we're at the Frostbank Center. It's NC State and Tennessee. These two meet on the hardwood for the first time in six years. What well, could be a very compelling one. Glad that you are with us this evening. That is the national championship winning head coach, Carolyn Peck. Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So, 7-3 start for Tennessee, the favorites to win the SEC heading into this season. They have played a very difficult slate. Their only losses to three top 10 ranked teams. Meanwhile, 7-2 start for NC State. That's an encouraging start for the Wolfpack. Who needs to have a monster game today if they were to pull off their biggest win of the season? Kevin, it's going to be number zero. DJ Horn has got to be that bucket getter. He's got to hunt buckets. Coach Keith said he reminds him of Tarquavian Smith and Jarkel Joyner. Those were two players for the Wolfpack that could get buckets, and DJ Horn can do exactly that. He is going to have to attack the pressure of Tennessee and be ready to pull the trigger when left open. But on the other side, the Wolfpack is going to have to find some defense for Dalton Connect, because Connect can connect. He is this player that can get a bucket at any time. Most opponents think he likes to drive left, but oh yeah, he can go right as well. And also a shooter from downtown. Connect is the offensive punch the Tennessee Vols have needed. Yeah, he has taken the conference and much of the nation by storm. But you are right, he's going for 18 points per game, 10 games into the season. He has been the scoring alpha that Tennessee has been missing the last few years. Well, it takes a lot of pressure off Santiago Vescovi as well. So now when you have another shooter on the floor, it really opens it's up the floor. The veteran Vols, 7-3 start. They have a couple of impressive wins against a pair of currently ranked Big Ten teams in Wisconsin and Illinois. They scored 86 in that win against the Illini last Saturday. So what do they have in store for us next? Just the uh, 12th ever meeting of these two teams. And after the DJ Burns miss, the former Vol can't connect. Here comes Tennessee this way. This is their starting five. Uh, many familiar faces that we have seen over the years. The newest one, as you pointed out, Dalton Connect. Transfer from Northern Colorado, where he scored 20 points a game last year. He has picked up where he left off a season ago. There's DJ Horn. Talk about a but he hunts buckets, whether it's shooting the long ball or taking the ball all the way to the rack, DJ Horn. CP is coming off a, a game in which he scored 22 on Tuesday against UT Martin. Both these teams played Tuesday, so short turnaround for this neutral court meeting. They last played in the Battle for Atlantis preseason, uh, early season tournament six years ago, so it's been a little while since they met in the non-conference. Ziegler connects from deep. And if his shot gets going early, that could be very good news for Tennessee. Meanwhile, this is Kevin Keats' is starting five. Casey Morsell, he is the uh, ACC veteran, the fifth-year senior, the experienced one in that starting lineup. Several first-year transfers like Horn and Taylor have added quite a bit of scoring as they had to replace a lot in the offseason. Burns now uh, 0 of 2 from the floor. Coach Keats told us this morning that he wanted DJ Burns inside to get a lot of touches. That doesn't mean that he has to necessarily isolate and go to score it. But if the defense collapses, find his shooters around him. And so this is now year seven. You blink and it's seven years for Kevin Keats in Raleigh. Four 20-win seasons in his six years, including last year they went to the NCAA tournament for the first time since his debut season. Josiah Jordan James spins, absorbs the contact, and the veteran is going to the free throw line. But Josiah Jordan James, he's got his spring back, really feeling healthy this season, and you can tell how explosive he was to the basket. You see a difference, right? He's a bit healthier this year. He is. He's not just settling so much for the outside shot, but taking the ball to the rack. Very versatile veteran. And Carolyn, it's now 119 games played in that Tennessee uniform. Missed about a third of the season last year due to just an array of injuries. Largely, it was a, a, a knee injury that kept him from being 100% for basically the majority of the year. 
Josiah Jordan James and Santiago Vestavi are the two leaders of this team. Rick Barnes really asked for them to really set the mood, set the tempo for this Tennessee team. They have some older dudes in that starting lineup, including James, comes down with the board. Tennessee with a three point cushion. Here is Connect. Yeah. You see Connect's length as he goes into the lane and releases that shot at the top. He's 6'6. Also a wide frame as well. Broad shoulders. Burns going hard right at Jonas Adu. And he's missed his first three shots against his former team. Josiah Jordan James in the paint. They funnel it around. He's got it in the corner. No. Jaden Taylor with his eyes up. Taylor is the Wolfpack's leading scorer. Goes for nearly 15 a game. Horn. Yeah. So DJ Horn has all five for the Wolfpack. Carolyn, he went six of ten from deep in that win Tuesday. I tell you. If he gets time, he gets his feet set, that's money. Kevin Key said he probably he could have went for 30. I had to pull him the tail end of that game, save him for today. Adu missed that one right at the rim. So a chance for the Wolfpack. This is Casey Morsell. Give it go. Back to Burns. Off the window, and there's his first basket. Who knows? Pain points coming pretty easy for NC State. Oh, James is wide open. Nice recognition by Ziegler. Yeah, this pace, not favorable for DJ Burns. Tennessee, a high scoring team this year. And they have quite a bit of offensive firepower, especially with the addition of Connect, averaging close to 80 points per game this year. And that is against a gauntlet of a schedule. <laughs> Morcel can't hit the turnaround. Carolyn, their three losses are to teams in the top ten. Currently, Purdue, Kansas, and UNC. Connect off the mark that time. That UNC game could have had a different outcome if Tennessee had had a better first half. But it was Dalton Connect that really brought the Volunteers back. He had 37 in that game. 13 of 17 from the floor. Dennis Parker, Jr., the freshman, who's uh, acquitted himself nicely in the early goings of his rookie season with the putback that time. Ziegler, the blow by and the score. So five quick ones for Zakai Ziegler. Again, his scoring is down a bit. Remember, he is still working his way back, if you will, from the ACL tear. Suffered February 28th last year, so nine games in. But for Ziegler, you don't need him to score a lot of points. Remember, you've got Dalton Connect on the floor. You've got Josiah Jordan James that's been able to get his score on. DJ Horn got his score on. But Ziegler is a facilitator. He can get inside to the second level of the defense and then find his shooters. Leading this team in assists, averaging about four a game. Vescovi, an aggressive drive. Adu had it knocked away by Horn, got it back. Shot clock still moving. Vescovi, that one's down and out. NC State pushing as well. Great pace and great start. Tennessee, 50% from the floor. DJ Horn is red hot to start. Pick it up right where he left off on Tuesday. He's perfect from deep. Taking the page out of Matt Morrell's book for Ole Miss yeah, in for game one. He started out four for four from three. There's a foul on the drive. DJ Horn has got 11 in the first six minutes. When I tell you there's a player to watch, it's DJ Horn, and he has not disappointed so far in this first time. Leo inside the home of the San Antonio Spurs. A clash featuring NC State and the 12th, 12th ranked Tennessee Vols. Rick Barnes has now been a head coach for 37 consecutive seasons. He used to coach down the road all those years ago in Texas, right up the road in Austin. Five straight t uh, trips, he has guided Tennessee to, to the NCAA tournament. That's uh, one away from matching the program record. And this certainly is uh, not just a tournament caliber team, they appear like they are a possible Final Four caliber team. That has been the standard the last few years in Knoxville. 
three in the air. That's offline for Jordan Ganey. And this one's going to stay here. Michael O'Connell went after it for NC State, but the Vols get a new 20 second shot clock. Kevin Keats, he got some activity on the sideline. He plays as hard over there as his guys do on the floor. <laughs> Somebody track his steps and mileage in this one as well. Jemai Meshack onto the floor for the first time for Tennessee. Ziegler is open. He hit a three in the first few minutes. Meshack with great effort and hustle underneath. Couldn't get the putback to go. And Ben Middlebrooks swipes that one away from him. So it's NC State by four, though, thanks in large part to TJ Horn's hot shooting to start. He is three of three from beyond the arc. Well, That's number zero in the red. NC State knows that Tennessee, if you can get to that second level of defense, they're going to rotate. So you have that option. If you don't have the bucket, the kick out right there. That's MJ Rice. This is just the third game of the year for the sophomore from Henderson. Ganey to the rim. That's good. So Ganey always providing instant offense off the bench. He's averaging about 10 a game. That's Justin's son. Justin, an assistant coach on Rick's staff. Also, former NC State Wolfpack captain from back in the day. Keep an eye on number three in the red. Rice, the Kansas transfer. And some steps that time. Morcell turns it over. Well, it's been a great pace to start this one. Teams have gotten up and down the floor. A lot of possessions and good quality shot making so far. You watch the players from NC State. They leave it on the floor. They give Coach Keats the signal when they need a rotation. That's a lot of trust in your team. You, you, you know your coach is going to get you out and get you back in, but you leave it all on the floor. The identity of his teams, we press all the time. Or just about. Cam Woods, that's number two in the red. He's guarding Josiah Jordan James, one of those two time transfers that has now become eligible. More on that as this game unfolds. It's a foul on Middlebrooks. Tennessee has gone with Awaka and Mayshack. Coach Barnes wants some energy defensively some toughness because that's where NC State has gained the advantage especially on the offensive end the ability to attack the paint that fell not on Middlebrooks by the way it's on Michael O'Connell James in the corner that's strong Rice has got it athletic explosive player right to the rack so MJ Rice has played the last two, 16 minutes in their latest win against UT Martin. There's a lot of hype surrounding Rice. He was at Kansas last year, former McDonald's All-American, playing in just his third game. Still learning quite a bit as well. He rejoined the team in October, stepped away from the team for quite a period of time for personal reasons. The defense, the quickness of NC State. Tennessee may not get a shot. And with just two on the timer, Meshack had to hoist. Ganey's in the right spot, but he left it short. NC State coming back this way with a four-point lead. Rice fires. Not that time. NC State getting back in transition as well. James, right-hand dribble out to Meshack. You see, defensively, NC State's able to keep their player in front. They're not having to help after getting beat. Oh, the, the hand in the face of Ganey leads to the turnover. O'Connell is headed to the free throw line when we come back. So the defense may be leading to offense for the Wolfpack. A sharp start for NC State. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Basketball Hall of Fame, where the game never ends. Also, Fairlife. Enjoy great taste and nutrition with Fairlife Ultra Filtered Milk. 
back in San Antonio, not far from downtown San An. NC State and Tennessee clash. That's a house divided right there. <laughs> and showing some great restraint. Kevin, keep an eye on points in the paint. Tennessee has three losses to Purdue, Kansas, and North Carolina. In all three of those games, Tennessee lost the battle inside. And right now, it's tied up, but NC State, and it's not just going to post, it's guards that have been able to get a bite of the paint. NC State has done a very uh, effective job at getting what they would like. Turnover, O'Connell takes that lob feed away. 44% from the floor to start are the Wolfpack. Cam Woods. He was a terrific scorer at North Carolina A&T last year. Up ahead to connect, wow! Took off a little too early. Slow to get back to his feet, but he's up. Tennessee retains it, and now connect is going back to work with the left hand, not that time. Ziegler, a contested three, puts it in. Tennessee. Wild sequence, but pays off with points. Yeah, Tennessee needed that. Ziegler to kind of settle things offensively after it being helter-skelter and calmly knocking down the three. So he has hit a pair of triples. He has eight. You mentioned it. He's been a brilliant facilitator, just like he was a year ago before the injury. Seven assists and four steals in their Tuesday win. Against George Mason. There's a foul on the drive. And so free throws coming for the Wolfpack. Tomorrow on ESPN, Bronny James, USC. They play their first game of a four-game road trip to end the year. That is cross country inside Auburn Arena. Sunday, 1 Eastern on ESPN. LeBron, dad, was in this building last night. While San Antonio was snapped, the win streak took down L.A. What did uh, LeBron say not long ago? Just the, the chance to see Bronny play in person for the first time was everything. His debut last Sunday, 17 minutes. After that scare as a parent, and to be able to watch your son play for 17 minutes had to have been quite emotional even. For sure. That one taken away by Horn. Horn attacking. Layup is off the mark. That one's punched out. Stays here, though. So NC State gets a new shot clock. Two things that the coaching staff for NC State tracks. One is deflections, and the other is paint touches. And you can see defensively, Every member of that Wolf Pack is looking to get as many deflection touches as they, as they can. Speaking of the deflection, it leads to the Tennessee tur uh, steal. Mays Shack gets into the paint, turns, puts it up, and the floater is good. First basket for the junior from Fontana, California. Now, Mayshack is on the floor for defensive purposes, but demonstrating you let him get inside, he can finish there too. Taylor looking to get free. Offensive foul, so that's an illegal screen on Dennis Parker Jr. That's the second on the freshman. With 8.40 to go in the first. Ziegler inside and Mayshack after the kickoff, not settling for the jumper, but getting inside, isolated one-on-one -on -one for the finish. So much of Tennessee's offense predicated on the ball movement and the player movement, the cuts, the motion. They have played a very difficult schedule to this point, yet averaging about 78 points per game, shooting 45% from the floor as a team. They've got wins at Wisconsin. That was up in uh, Madison. And then last weekend against Illinois, where they scored 86. Adu was key in that win. And he's got his first basket tonight. Adu coming off a big game 
against Georgia Southern, where in that first half, Rick Barnes was not pleased. Well, the second half wasn't pleased with his team after they got a significant lead. Felt like they coasted. Horn used the shot, uh, shot fake. Rebound down to Vescovy. Connect, attacks right into Burns, and he stripped it away. Up ahead to Morsell, collects, it's fouled. Took a, a hard tumble, but he's able to get back up, and he's at the free throw line when we return. NC State pushing the pace. Nothing new there. You are watching the SEC on ESPN in San Antonio, where NC State meets Tennessee. It, are, are overalls officially back? Everything oh. is old, is new once again. Come on, Kevin, you gotta get with the times. <laughs> overalls are in. I know around the Tennessee campus they are. I don't think they, overalls they ever the went out. Scheme. I'm from Tennessee. Overalls never went out. <laughs> Those are <laughs> always style. I'm gonna hold you to that at some point. I expect <laughs> overalls for a game moving forward. 7.45 to go. Although I do love the, the checkered pattern, candy stripe, Tennessee colors the players wear, pregame warm-ups. NC State has done a fine job defensively. They've turned Tennessee over four times already. They have gotten out in transition. They've contained Dalton Connect. How are they doing that? Connect's only got two points. He's one for five. And a big reason is every time he's looked to drive, that lane has shut down. Oh, Ziegler was hounded by Horn. Nearly took it away. And ball back to NC State. So Ziegler was the last one to touch it. Horn picked him up. I'm going to tell, tell you why Kevin Keats loves DJ Horn because he's a player that plays with a chip on his shoulder. He was lightly recruited. He went to Illinois State. He said there he had to work hard, everything, nothing was given to him. Then he transferred to Arizona State, but he still plays with that chip. Taylor, that's a difficult step back and he connects. Horn, uh, undoubtedly a portal vet. Look at the pressure in the backcourt. Morcell nearly takes it away. Numbers, maybe. Mayshack fires. And he hits a three. Mayshack only one of seven from deep this year. And hits a big one to vault Tennessee back ahead. Well, mayshack has been really working on his form, getting a lot of repeti repetition up. It's paying off. And he was critical in that win against Illinois Saturday. Horn, another? No, he started three of three from beyond the arc to begin the game. Taylor can hit this. Mohamed Diara got his hands on it. And it's Tennessee ball. The penetrate and pitch. Josiah Jordan James makes the defense all sink in, and Meshack knocks it down. That was good from NBA range, was it not? It was. We got the <laughs> NBA line here, of course. Different court. Court last night was the old school, original turquoise and orange San Antonio Spurs colors. Ziegler behind the back. Competitive and tight first half. Vescovy, no. Burns comes down at the board. That's a big box out by DJ Burns. I mentioned before, Carolyn, Tennessee, they were picked as the preseason favorites to win the league. Certainly an SEC title contender for sure. Meanwhile, NC State, you know, they're slotted to finish maybe middle of the pack of the ACC. Kevin Keats has a nice array of veteran guards, though. Many of them we've highlighted. Four to shoot, Morcell with a very difficult fall away. Ziegler gives him a look after the misfire. James lets it go and sticks a three. That was all set up by the discipline of Meshack. Yes, he hit a three, but instead of pulling the heat check, 
he really did that bait shot fake and made that extra pass to Josiah Jordan James. Well, and you mentioned it, James having a career year shooting the ball. He's about 40% from deep this year. It's by far his best 10 games in. Diara draws the foul. That's the first on Mayshek. You watch Mayshek making the extra pass and finding James on the wing. It's pretty. So it's a, a very quiet 6-0 Tennessee run, if you will. NC State won for its last seven from the floor. Burns cut off by Adu with three to shoot. Or so, way off that time. Tennessee in a hurry. Ziegler steps into it and splashes a three. It's a 9-0 Tennessee run, and Kevin Keats needs a minute. Timeout, NC State. Ziegler with 11 in the first half. He's connected three times from deep. Tennessee with its biggest lead of the night. Tennessee is on a 9-0 run, CP. How have they done it? I think a lot of it has to do with Josiah Jordan James pushing in transition as he runs that left lane. He is the main focus of the defense and has done a terrific job of not, if he didn't take it for himself, finding the open shooter and Ziegler knocked it down. Well, Tennessee just turned the Wolf Pack over in the backcourt. So Ziegler is already at his season high. He's got 11 in his first half. But back to James, it's not just the seven points. He's got four boards, three assists as well. He's one of the leaders on this team. So Tennessee has tightened up the last few minutes. Seven point cushion, their largest advantage of the game. Just getting started in the first half here. Burns trying to back down Adu. This is his closest range look. He flips that one up and in. It's now two baskets for Burns. He's got four. Burns, I mentioned he's the former volley. He redshirted his rookie season. That was now five years ago. And Tennessee transferred away to Winthrop. And this is final year. College Hoops is third in Raleigh. Adu. His outside stroke has improved. You mentioned it. He's coming off that monster 29-point performance on Tuesday. Taylor had it knocked away. It stays here. And so NC State looking for some answers. Down five. Burns trying to make him pay in the paint. Going to need. Coach Greenberg, you're exactly right. When you're talking about DJ Horn, since about the 15 minute mark, he's only had two shots and he hasn't scored. So he's got to get more involved in NC State's offense. It's a long time, there's 3.40 to go. You saw there on the side, the four remaining unbeatens. We saw one of those teams earlier today, Ole Miss, with a pretty emphatic win over Cal. So they've now rolled to 10 and 0. NC State was out of bounds there. Morcell stepped on the sideline, so ball back to Tennessee. Yeah, this this has been. We are coming to a close. The curtain is is closing on a exquisite day of college hoops. We had the top three battle: Purdue with the win over Arizona and Indianapolis earlier. Oh, Ziegler couldn't get the finger roll to go. Adu battles for the board, knocked away. Burns comes up with it. I was talking to some Tennessee fans in between games, and they said Tennessee favored by three. NC State said, not so fast. <laughs> not so, I love a good not so fast. This is Taylor to the rim, got his own miss. Adu blocked it, but a foul. So Taylor is going to the free throw line. He's still in search of his first points. Tennessee by five with less than three to go. Take a look at what's coming your way on Wednesday. This triple header on the heels of what we saw today is 
likely to deliver again. Six-ranked Baylor, who just went down earlier today, takes on Duke, and then the Jumpman Invitational featuring North Carolina and Oklahoma. Top 15 battle at 9. Also, Alabama and Arizona beat at 11 Eastern out on the West Coast. It's Wednesday on ESPN. Kentucky just took down the Tar Heels today. That's a big win for Kentucky. Oh, it's huge. UNC had that one loss down to the Bahamas against Villanova. And they have been unblemished until getting toppled by Kentucky earlier today. And high level matchups all day today, and we will continue to see that on Wednesday. Yeah, early December is a good tune up as these teams look ready to approach conference play. So, Carolyn, we have seen that the defense notched up a bit. Six minutes into the game, it was 15-11. And since then, we have, we have seen a bit less scoring. Both teams shooting now below 40% from the floor. Well, right now, NC State has Dalton Connects number. Uh, Horn, his first point since, what was it, 15 minute Another mark, 15 you said? minute mark, yeah, earlier in this half. One point game with 2.10 to go in the first. Marcel on Dalton Connect. Connect has not been able to get an easy lane anywhere in this first half. He's one of five from the floor. That's it. Ziegler shuffles it to him. Back to Ziegler. There's a whistle. That's just the sixth team foul on NC State. So Tennessee inbounds with a new 20 second shot clock. <laughs> The Wolfpack have to love how DJ Horn can set you up and then go hard, middle, reverse pivot, and get to the basket. Now, he's been a starter everywhere, a portal veteran. You, you documented his journey to Raleigh. Well, this is now a fourth year in his five-year college career where he has averaged double figures in scoring. So he is accustomed to this role, doing it at a different level here in the ACC. Well, he's just a fierce competitor. Adu at the rim. That's big. Adu was the bright spot for the Volunteers against Georgia Southern. Coach Barnes just wants Adu to be consistent, bring it every night. Horn, that's a step back long two. Could not get it to go. Connect down with the rebound. That's his first board. Tennessee running its stuff to Adu. Ziegler open. Horn down at the board, and he got pushed. That's just the sixth team foul on Tennessee. Coming up tomorrow over on ESPN, also the SEC Network. To send you to the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. It's a matchup featuring Northwestern State and LSU. The reigning national champs back in action tomorrow at 3 Eastern. And they got two transfers. Got Haley Van Lith coming from Louisville and Anissa Morrow from DePaul. Morrow has had a major impact on the LSU Tigers. Having that inside combo with Morrow and Angel Reese, they have been a force. That's a lot of star power on that roster. Cam Woods, his first points as a Wolfpack. Remember, he's one of those two-time transfers. The NCAA re releasing the statement yesterday saying that all two-time transfers don't have to rely on a waiver. They are eligible to play, will not be penalized moving forward the remainder of this athletic calendar year. And a timeout by Tennessee after the James triple. Back and forth, knocking down the three. These two teams are gonna challenge each other from the perimeter. Josiah Jordan James said, whatever you can do, I can do better. Knocks it down from the top of the key. You know, we were talking to Kevin Keats and we asked him about Woods. This pretty you know, significant statement and decision that the NCAA reached with all of those states that filed the lawsuit a few days ago. He said, we'll see. 
I mean, he's been he's ready. We'll see if we can get him some minutes tonight. He has provided Keats and this Wolfpack team some valuable minutes in the first half. This is a good timeout by Rick Barnes with 30, almost 32 seconds left. He wants to make sure his team goes into the locker room with a lead. He wants to break the momentum of NC State. It's very important that the Vols focus on getting a stop on this possession. NC State for a good portion of the first bit of this half. Tennessee's largest lead was seven. Outside of that, this game has been tight. Keep an eye on number zero. Meshack has the responsibility for DJ Horn. Yep, he's on the block. Woods has got it. Ziegler read the pass, takes it away. Here he comes, seven seconds. Over to Meshack, pump fake. Extra pass to Ganey, step back, contested three. That's off the mark. And so NC State dodges a bullet at least. Tennessee though with a three point lead at the break. Ziegler, James leading the way, both in double figures. And this one a tight one in the first half. So we'll go to the studio now. Zubin and Coach Greenberg standing by. Go ahead, guys. Series in San Antonio. Tennessee by three in what was a very entertaining and tight first half. Inside the Frost Bank Center, home to the San Antonio Spurs. Hope you have enjoyed it. We have. That's Carolyn Peck, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So Tennessee at one point had a seven point lead. Other than that, it was a pretty tight game the first 20 minutes. Well, DJ Horn for NC State started out hot, then he went kind of silent, came back a little bit. But in the meantime, Zakiah Ziegler was fantastic in really being able to attack, get down, excuse me, get downhill, but knocking down key threes when Tennessee needed it. And also the leadership that Josiah Jordan James has brought to this team has helped Tennessee to maintain this lead. And they have needed that scoring on an evening in which their scoring alpha, the transfer Dalton Connect, was held to just two points and five shots, uh, CP. That was it. Did not get to the free throw line either. And we start the second half with a Tennessee turnover. There were a surplus of those. That's now nine for Rick Barnes' team. Casey Marcel has been on Dalton Connect, and if it hasn't been him, it's been DJ Horn, bringing quickness and really taking away drive opportunities for number, thir number three in white. NC State in search of what would undoubtedly be its signature win of the season. Biggest win to date against Boston College. That's really it. Burns trying to beat the timer, could not get it to go. So here is Connect, gets cut off by Marcel again. Vescovi to the rack, got bailed out by the whistle, and heads to the line for a pair. NC State in a gap defense, so every time Dalton Connect looks to attack the basket, there's going to be a stunt to stop his drive and to make him give it up. You watch how Taylor, he rotated over, and he wasn't able to get where he wanted to go and kick out. And that has been very effective tonight. Tennessee, or rather Connect, has taken just five shots. He's one of five from the floor. This is uh, someone who went for 34. They get 37 against North Carolina earlier this year. He's got three 20-point games. Ziegler takes it away in the backcourt. They find Connect underneath. Let's see if he can get something in a scramble. Vescovi got it. That's his first basket. So Tennessee starts the second half on a quick 5 nothing burst. Well, Connect doesn't need to force shots either. What he's got to do is anticipate where the rotations are coming from. Oh, Marcel goes back door and beats him. He's also got to play some defense. Competitive game thus far, featuring a couple of seven win teams. Oh, 
Muscovy, this time it's a contested three. And James recovers it. NC State's only losses to a now ranked, a very good BYU team. And then on the road at Ole Miss, a team that probably should be ranked. Vescovy goes tumbling over one of the photographers and videographers, I should say, as well. Vescovy, though, got the basket. Taylor hit hard, and he's heading to the line after the foul. Santiago Vescovy is getting back to being himself. Coach Barnes said he's had two really good days of practice and he looks like he's really getting his legs back under him and plays like that, does hustle, effort plays, drives. That's what we expect from Santi Vescovi. Go right over top to a camera, cameraman on the pace line there. Look out. Always keep your eyes on the ball. Reset, no problem. Keep your head on a swivel. I like that Spurs hat he's got. Taylor connects at the line. Jaden Taylor, the junior from Indianapolis, came over from Butler. Scored just four in the first half. James wants it. Another triple for Josiah Jordan James. Now three from beyond the arc for the veteran, the general, in his fifth season at Tennessee. That duo, Vescovy and James, they have put in a lot of fall equity, a lot of sweat equity over the years. And that Tennessee uniform. Taylor is going back to the free throw line. Rick Barnes has got to be happy to see Josiah Jordan James really getting back to his true self. We've seen him go inside, very confident as he loads up to knock down that three. He's three of five from deep tonight. And his percentages, now granted we're only 10 games into the season, but Tennessee has played some really strong teams, Purdue, Kansas, Illinois, UNC. He looks different to you. Why? Well, what's, what's he looking like early on to start this year? Well, he looks like he's playing pay, pain free. He just feels good out there. And he's so explosive when he changes directions or decides to get downhill. Better than 40% now from beyond the arc to start the year. Ziegler trying to initiate the offense. They dump it into Adu. James finds his spot. Left the 15 footer short. Tried to follow it. Taylor snatches it. And here come the Wolfpack. Down seven. Parker, here's the freshman. He draws the foul. So the Wolfpack doing a good job of drawing the whistle and getting to the free throw line there. Nine of 12 at the line this, uh, this evening. Another reminder on Sunday, Bronny James and the Trojans go cross country to take on Bruce Pearl's Tigers. It's inside Neville Arena at Auburn Sunday, one Eastern on ESPN. So Auburn, one of a, several SEC teams that are right outside the top 25. Conference play is going to be fun to watch. Auburn, it's right Arkansas, around the corner now. Right, Alabama, Texas A&M. Alabama with a challenging one in a couple of days. They've got that game at Arizona on Wednesday. Boy, Alabama has played a challenging slate. Tennessee has played a. <laughs> A frightening schedule, if you look at it. Yeah, this non-conference for the SEC has got to help them when the committee starts to make some decisions later in February as they approach March of what teams are in the tournament. This Tennessee team, it's, it's obviously gotten the reputation as being one of the most rugged defenses in the nation the last few years. In that Purdue loss, they held the Boilermakers to 35% shooting from the floor. They turned them over 16 times. 
So that was a one, probably its most impressive defensive showing, but they lost by four. This one's going the other way. It's a foul on Vescovy. Rick Barnes is looking for the explanation. That was Michael Irving, who is the one who blew the whistle there, issuing the foul on Vescovy when Morsell fell. I think Coach Barnes wanted him to review it. Nevertheless, we're back on this side of the floor. Burns has got that feathery touch. He does. He's Mr. Automatic around the rim. Soft hands, uses his body. Tennessee really worked on defending the back down from DJ Burns. Horn comes down with the loose ball. Mayshack poked it away, but out of bounds. Oh, Rick Barnes is looking for <laughs> He's looking for Irving. Not going to get him. Timeout. Four minutes into the second half, and Tennessee leads. You are watching the SEC on ESPN, and welcome back to San Antonio, inside the home of the San Antonio Spurs. The former San Antonio star, Becky Hammond, a Hall of Famer, was in the building earlier for the Baylor-Miami women's game that kicked off our triple header. And because of that, Jeremy Sohan, current Spurs forward, he was there to cheer on his former Baylor Bears. He spent one year at Baylor, and in Waco, Keldon Johnson is now in his fifth season with the Spurs, it was also on hand earlier today. Ole Miss uh, toppling Cal in the second game of our triple header. So star-studded crowd. So what is that now? Two years as head coach of the Aces for Becky Hammond. She's two for two. She two is. Two for two, two titles. Two in a row, <laughs> and not just two in a row, her first two years with the Las Vegas Aces. It's another bucket for Burns in the two-point game. Becky Hammond and Carolyn Peck show up. In the words of Carolyn Peck, diamonds started raining. Diamonds just like, started I'm raining down. You. I have to quote you from three minutes ago. But that was a good one. It didn't happen until Becky Hammond got to Las Vegas. I wish I could take credit for that. Hey, and meanwhile, it's a two-point game once again. Tennessee now, after the scramble, converts. That's Mayshack. So Meshack has actually, he's been aggressive. You know, he scored nine points in the win against Illinois. He was efficient with when he would attack the rim, but also four, bo four boards, three assists in that win against the Illini. Meshack earns his minutes for how he performs defensively. Yeah, on this end of the floor. Back to Burns, he's had the hot hand of late, and so DJ Burns, all of a sudden, has got 10 points, eight of them in this second half. He's got more than 1,600 career points, sixth year senior, after he spent the redshirt year in Knoxville. Ziegler on the attack. How did that one go in? Wow. 13 points for Zakai Ziegler. That's a new season high. And so Tennessee, with Dalton Connect off the floor, and with just two points tonight, still maintaining the lead. But it's only a four-point cushion. Turnover. And who's on the floor? Mayshack. He is as dependable a defender as Rick Barnes has really ever coached. Meshack now starting to go to work on Morsell. And there's a reach in on Morsell. Zakaya so Ziegler uses his quickness to get underneath, get by, and get to the hoop. Just to protect it, get inside the defense, and get the finish. That is a pretty finish falling down. 
Last year, the all-conference selection. Ganey for three. adu has got to keep Burns off the block. Quick trigger from MJ Rice. Again, in just his third game as a Wolfpack, he's one of five from the floor. And 0 of three from deep. Ziegler. Nope. So that is the quarter court over the back on Tobe Awaka. That's the first foul on the sophomore from Hyde Park, New York. Limited minutes tonight for Awaka. Those two. Let's grab a jersey. Yeah. So the, you know the old saying, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Yep. Well, get ready for this. Tennessee on the move now. Mayshack converts. And the Vols have very quickly, quietly almost, Swelled this lead to the largest of the evening. It's a nine-point cushion. Rick Barnes is going with a defensive unit. Awaka, Mayshack, and Ganey on the floor for the Volunteers. Another one-and-done possession for NC State. Tennessee plus seven on the glass tonight. They've done a fine job there. And so Ben Middlebrooks is set to check in for the Wolfpack. Comes in, Morcell takes a seat. Tennessee is aiming to stretch this to a double-digit lead. It has not done that at any point tonight. It's been because of what has happened on the defensive end and then the aggressiveness to attack the rim. Ziegler steps back and sticks the mid-range. This is his finest shooting performance. Rick Barnes, you know, we were talking to him earlier. He said he's just getting going, just getting going. It's a 9-0 run, and that prompts the NC State timeout. The 12th-ranked Vols have opened up their largest lead of the night. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Fairlife. Enjoy great taste and nutrition with Fairlife Ultra Filtered Milk. Back in San Antonio with Carolyn Peck, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. It's been a delight to watch Double Z tonight. Zakai Ziegler, he's reached season highs in, or tied in points, assists, field goals, three-point makes, and steals. He already has seven assists on the night. He's done a little bit of everything for the Tennessee Vols. It's been the resurrection of Ziegler this year. He suffered the torn ACL February 28th last season. This is a Tennessee team that reached the Sweet 16. Boy, imagine if he was available for their postseason run. He has recovered, and here he is. He has not missed a single game this season. The all-conference selection from a year ago, and the confident, swaggering heartbeat of this Tennessee team. Well, what Tennessee fans have to be happy about, remember Ziegler last season, Rick Barnes put him into the starting lineup. He didn't play so well starting. It's a big one by Parker. The freshman. But Ziegler didn't play so well starting, and so Rick Barnes resulted in him coming back off the bench. This year, in that starting role, you're right, he's playing with that swag. Well, and you have been there before, trying to determine how do you get the most out of your players. What are the roles they're most comfortable in? Awaka draws the foul and he's going to the line. This eight point game, 11 minutes to go. We'll step aside one more time in San Antonio. Frostbank Center, home for the San Antonio Spurs. 
third game of the night. Tennessee with an eight point lead over NC State. Even with their leading scorer, Dalton Connect having a pedestrian. He was, on, he was on the top of NC State scouting report, knowing that he was going to attack the basket. And when that happened, the defense was ready to shift in that gap defense and early rotation made every shot attempt tough for number three in white. CP, he's only taken five shots, that's it. He went for 37 earlier this year against UNC on 13 of 17 shooting. So Kevin Keats and his staff, they put together a fine game plan to defend one of the SEC's top scorers. Well, and they forced the dribble because also Connect has not been open to even take a three. He's only had one three-point attempt today. Just crowding a score, a shooter, it's the best way to try to take their game away. And then you depend on your teammates to rotate to help you should you get beat off the bounce. Awaka did not touch that one, so he was able to recover it and allowed to recover it in the backcourt. J.P. Estrella is into the game for the first time for Tennessee, so they've now gone nine deep. Estrella is number 13 in the white. One of the freshmen who's gotten some decent run this year. Ziegler's got the season high 15. Left the leaner, uh, well, hit the back iron. And NC State trying to trim this nine point deficit. That's a foul on Ziegler, just his second. That's the seventh team foul, though, so NC State is headed to the free throw line. They are in the bonus. And Cam Wood, he, that's what he's going to try to do is get a piece of the paint. That's one of the things that Coach Keats really likes about him is toughness. And then he's a, he's a paint guy. He's a paint touch guy. He scored 17 a game last year at NC, uh, North Carolina A&T, the junior from Alabama. Kevin Keats uh, told us that practice is hard. He's brought a little extra to practice this week. I think a lot of the two-time transfers around the country did. You've got to when you look. They read the they read the headlines. <laughs> yeah. They're following they Twitter know. of the potential of what might happen. Again, that that bit of news yesterday has the potential to be major for a lot of programs that were still waiting on waivers to determine the eligibility of a second time undergrad transfer. We had a court ruling a couple of days ago, a lot of court jargon I've been reading about. You're gonna be an attorney by the time all this is yeah. over. Litigation, not my strong suit. But anywho, NCAA coming through with the sweeping statement yesterday saying that all of those transfers awaiting just a decision, a ruling on their eligibility. No longer have to wait. They're all cleared to play through the end of the 23-24 athletic calendar season. That's all winter spring sports. NC State aggressive again on this end. And so free throws coming. It's an eight point game with just about 10 minutes to go. The big one tomorrow, the championship game at three Eastern of the NCAA Volleyball National Championship. Nebraska and defending champ Texas in Tampa. Cornhuskers and Longhorns, they have squared off twice before in this title game in 95 and 2015. Our mutual friend on the call, right? Courtney Lyle has that one. one. Has that call, she sure does. So we'll see if Texas, Holly McPeak of course, calling the action with her. We'll see if Texas can repeat. I know is I still remember that football stadium filled with fans back in August with oh, Nebraska. That was awesome. awesome way to start, yeah. start the volleyball season. It would be a fitting way to finish perhaps if they were to seal the deal tomorrow. It's a foul on Taylor with 10.01 to go in the second. Second on Taylor. NC State really going with four guards, one center to match up with Tennessee. Knowing Tennessee has shooters like Ziegler, Connect, Ganey on the perimeter. That one big is Middlebrooks. Number 34 in the paint. 
Connect still sitting on those two points. He's one of six from the floor. Ganey draws a foul on Parker, so a nice veteran move. Ganey, who was a double-figure scorer a couple of years at USC Upstate, joins uh, dad, his father, Justin, one of the assistants on the staff. And the former NC State captain himself. He graduated in 2000. Watching Coach Ganey at shoot around today, taking his team through the scout. The energy, the detail in covering NC State and what Tennessee needed to focus on covering. Connect, gets free, blocked by Middlebrooks. Up ahead, here comes the Wolfpack. Taylor to the rim, missed it. Middlebrooks the board. Back out to Horn, he's open, and connects. It's a gigantic three. That's got NC State back within four, 9.20 to go. And Coach Keats loves it. He's bringing the energy from the sideline. That's the fourth triple for Horn. He's got four of his team's six, and he has 16. Ziegler on the attack to the corner. Woods down with the board. Woods, eyes up, leaves it for Morcell. Wild layup, Middlebrooks with another offensive board. Oh, DJ Horn was open on the wing. Still calling for it over there. Taylor around the screen, pocket pass, count it! Middlebrooks headed to the line. NC State back in it, just like that. Talked about DJ Horn open on the wing. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. Call for the ball, makes the defense shift over. Worry about the shooter, and Middlebrooks, he just slips to the basket. It's a 7-0 run. One more here, gets it back to a one-point game. Buckle up, we got a tight one again, CP. Burns back in for Middlebrook, so he's gets a whole bunch of well-earned high fives. That offensive rebound in that sequence led to his three-point play, so working for his points. And that double-digit lead has Evaporated. It's an 11 to 1 run for the Wolfpack over the last 3.34. You know what that. Yeah, nice cut that time by Vescovy. That's a good answer. Well, that last... Uruguayan has five. That last bucket by NC State put NC State up two points in the paint. Vescovy, he balanced the score. Three point lead for the SEC favorites. Burns has eight, turns, muscles in, spins it off the window. It's a one-point game again. Okay, big man, work that baseline. Walk that tightrope, number three zero in red. <laughs> He's graceful. That's now 12, rather, for DJ Burns. Adu, they're trying to find him. Burns gets back and recovers. Meshack foul. The Wolfpack is stay in the hunt. DJ Burns, little ballerina step, gets two on the base. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A few miles from downtown San Antonio, the only thing better than uh, Pinkerton's brisket downtown is maybe the finish to this one. Inside the home of the San Antonio Spurs, one point lead for Tennessee. A few minutes ago, Carolyn, the Vols had a 11 point advantage. And they were firing on all cylinders. Since then, an 11 to one NC State run. And the free throws from Meshack will put an end to that swing. Well, DJ Burns seemed to have really conserved his energy for this second half. He has really gone to work down low. If he's not been productive scoring, he's at least moved the basketball for the Wolfpack. Seven and a half left. This would be NC State's 
most significant win of the year by far. They've started conference play 1-0. and They won at Boston College. That's pretty much its best win. Taylor sticks to three, and we're knotted up at 60. There is some life again on that NC State side. Tennessee's got to find its offense. With Dalton Connect on the bench, Vescovy and Ziegler are going to have to carry the mail. Well, he was open. He got free with the ball fake for a moment. Missed the bunny. Taylor lost that one. Last touch by Tennessee, though. Again, who touches the ball, but DJ Burns swings it over to Taylor, who knocks down the three. And this team, they believe. We mentioned how Burns is, he has 12 tonight on 6 of 10 shooting. It's a couple of assists as well. Now he's got five. He averages about two or three a game. Very good vision and instincts when he's got the ball. So that's a season high five assists. Where's he going now? It's another cross-court feed. Horn couldn't hit. The leadership from Josi Josiah Jordan James needs to step up right now for the Volunteers. Mayshack has been aggressive. Wild layup, though, taken away by Tennessee. That was a walk-up. James got it! There he is. So the offensive rebound on this side leads to an extra look at an extra bucket. Awaka just checked into the game a minute or two ago and pulled this one away. A big offensive board. You're the ranked team. You've got to have the leadership, and Josiah Jordan James is the man for the Tennessee Volunteers. NBA range. That one behind the NBA line. James was firing in the first half. He had 10 at the break, now 16. Four, he's four of six from downtown. Meanwhile, Burns started his career in Tennessee. Now with 13 and five after the miss, it's still a one possession game. NC State led for seven minutes early in the first half, but has not led since. Waka barging into Burns, rises and scores. Flexes over him. And Awaka displaying his offensive game. And Tennessee may have found something there with the isolation of Awaka on Burns. Awaka has the vertical to get up over Burns' size. Woods to the basket. It's a difficult layup. Awaka down with the board. Ziegler into the paint, misfires. Awaka got his right hand on it. Now numbers for NC State if it hurries. Bounce pass, Morsell on the reverse. Converts with five to play. NC State runs so hard in transition. Had two shooters on both sides and a rim runner. A lot of good offense in this second half. NC State 56% from the floor in the second period. That's a foul on, look like Woods. I believe, Woods. I believe ahead, Josiah please. Jordan James needs to touch the ball down the stretch. Every possession for Tennessee. Well, this is their fearless veteran, fifth year in that Tennessee uniform. He decided to come back for one more. Played 119 games in that Vol uniform. Tonight, 17 points. Rick Barnes really trusts James. Puts a lot of onus on his shoulders for this team. Where's that number 30? He started with the jersey number five early in his career. Switched to 30. His dad, Kurt, wore that at Michigan State. He's a good player there for many years. 
Tennessee bringing full court pressure. DJ Horn, dangerous for the Wolfpack. He started out hot in that first half. Finds Morcel, who's into the paint, pushes that one up, misfires. Tennessee and NC State locked up in a tight one. A walk has been huge, 10 rebounds for the Volunteers. James caught in the baseline. Ziegler bails him out, he's in the corner. Stepped out of bounds. Ball back to NC State with 3.56 to go. Buckle up. Last four minutes of this very entertaining battle, little ACC-SEC crossover. Neutral site contest at San Antonio. It's the third of our triple header. This one's coming down to the wire. A couple of timeouts for each team. You see NC State not only has the ball, but also has the possession arrow. They are in the double bonus as well. The last 356 of this game. Carolyn, they have been close. They led for portions of the first half, but they have not led since. And here they are with the ball down four in the front court. And it's gonna be important for Tennessee to keep NC State in front of them. They cannot get beat off the bounce, over rotate because they have very capable three-point shooters. Vlad Tadal and Michael Irvin, they are just double checking something at the monitor and we are good to go with 3.56 to go. Tough inbound spot where Morcell is. Woods lays it up. Rebound down to Awaka. That's a jump ball. Possession arrow favors NC State. So if he gets credit for that rebound, that's 11 in 15 minutes. He's 11 rebounds in 15 minutes. He has had 10 plus rebounds, and this is the first since last March for Awaka. I'd love to see the per 40 numbers uh, tonight. <laughs> Burns had it stripped away, but a foul. It's a reach in on James. That's his fourth, so something to be aware of moving forward. That's Tennessee's veteran. He has led this team to the promised land time and time again in his five years. Burns going to the free throw line. Can they get over the hump in the second half? They have not led at any point in the second. Keats and Barnes, the two head coaches, got a great deal of respect for one another. It is kind of risky leaving Josiah Jordan James on the floor right now. But Rick Barnes, he trusts his veteran. NC State bench was calling for a five-second count. Tennessee got it in just in time. One possession game. Down the final stretch we go. James into the paint, bumped. That's a foul. Tennessee in the bonus. So it's going to the line for a one and one. That's the fourth on the freshman, Dennis Parker, Jr. But running that dribble drive action and especially getting the ball to James, he's so, so strong that he's either going to get by you or get right there to the free throw line. He has answered the call, Carolyn, tonight with Connect having a very quiet evening. That's right. He's now approaching, tying his season high, went for 20 earlier this year in that loss to UNC. And efficient from the three-point line as well. Four of six. Big time. Plus the six rebounds, three assists. So James has been a gigantic factor in this one, to say the least. It's still a two-possession game in San Antonio. 
Awaka guarding Burns, and Burns, if he can get the ball on the block, he can make things happen. 18 feet away now against Awaka. Trying to turn. Mayshack strips it away. So their lockdown defender, who just lo he loves that role. He relishes being that guy. He forces the turnover. And now Tennessee just has to work clock control. Ziegler trying to break down Woods. Into the paint, finds Mayshack. One more pass to Ziegler. He's open, puts it up, left it short. There's a deep three. New 20 seconds for Tennessee. I think Awaka should get credit for that, even though he didn't totally have possession of that rebound. He has been huge in his limited minutes. Seven to shoot, hesitation to the corner. That's a big three. Back to a seven point lead. Ziegler with another. He's got four threes on the night. Woods is going to the free throw line with 2.03 to go. And Ziegler had just missed a three, but he's got a short term memory. Vescovy's still got confidence in number five in white, and he buries it from the corner pocket. It's by far a season high for Ziegler with the 18 points. How many times have we seen a critical offensive rebound lead to a clutch basket tonight? That's the best time to take a three is off an offensive rebound because the defense is still scrambling. Can't get to you. Half of a walk is 10 rebounds on the offensive side. Wow. And so NC State takes the timeout. They are down five once again with 2.03 to go in this ball game. We'll take a quick timeout. Back after this to San Antonio. Tennessee by five, looking to get to eight and three and another win away from home. On a night when the Vols have had to improvise a bit with Dalton Connect having an off shooting day. Josiah Jordan James, the veteran, the general, has stepped up in a big way. Well, when you have a man down, you gotta have another man step up. And Josiah Jordan James has done that. He's got 20 points. He's five and nine from the floor. Perfect six for six from the free throw line. Tennessee breaks that press. Kevin Keats, his team, has got to play lockdown defense now. 145 to go, down five. Ziegler try to wiggle by Taylor. Cut him off. James swishes one. A huge night. That's what for Josiah Jordan James. That's what leaders do. Big moments hit big buckets. <laughs> Offensive foul on Burns gives it back to Tennessee. It's a new career high for Josiah Jordan James. Stay. They had. Woods topples over Ziegler. That's the veteran move there. Found Woods behind him and slammed on the brakes to get the whistle. So Ziegler is going to the free throw line. Tennessee is battle tested as any team in America with the wins against Wisconsin on the road against Illinois last weekend. Here is what it has next. A little bit of a late two weeks, two, three weeks, I should say, until conference play begins January 6th. And it gets that Ole Miss team that just improved to 10-0 earlier today. When you look at the break that Tennessee is going to have, they play Thursday, then not again until January 2nd. The players got to stay in great shape. They got to eat right. Not too many of those red vivid cookies. <laughs> I know your favorite now. 
Taylor sets his feet, leaves that one short. And so NC State had this back to a two-point game a few minutes ago, and they're going to end this game uh, very cold. They're one of their last seven, so they go cold at the wrong time. The free throw sent Tennessee to the line, and so images of old, if you will, with James going for 23 and Ziegler with a new season high of 19. This is what Kevin Keats' team has left in the non-conference, St. Louis, and then Detroit Mercy. It starts ACC play January 3rd at Notre Dame. So NC State's got a good little break as well from the 23rd to the second. Another rebound. That's now 12, a dozen for Tobey Awaka. A lot of Tennessee players, like usual, had their fingerprints on this win. You know, Awaka scores it again with that jump hook. Don't forget about my offensive game, he's saying. Woods hoists. That's a very deep three. And timeout. NC State with 24.1 to go. So they will need uh, quite the miraculous finish. It's a three possession game, though, with 24.1 to go. Josiah Jordan J. Triple J went to work tonight. Uh, he had 23 points, six of 10 from the floor, five of seven from the three point line. Perfect six for six from the free throw line. He has added seven rebounds and three assists. But the biggest thing that he has brought for the Volunteers is his leadership on the floor. With Dalton Connect struggling from the floor tonight, the veteran leadership of Josiah Jordan James has been huge for the Tennessee Volunteers. Fifth season with the program. His decision making was, was really nice tonight as well. New one to drive, new one to take the three. Well, there was no panic. Even when North Carolina State made their run, Josiah Jordan James really stayed calm, cool, collected. He led by example, and the rest of his team followed, especially with his aggression of getting on the glass, getting downhill defensively and rebounding. It was a four-point game at the break. With seven minutes to go, NC State tied it up. It was, it was even at 60. And then with a few minutes left in this game, it was just a two-point game. However, Tennessee never fell behind in this second half. They stuck together. But I think NC State's going to be a very competitive team in the ACC this year, just like they were a season ago when they went to the tournament. However, Tennessee just had a little more when it counted most tonight. Well, there's 24 seconds left. They've got to make sure that they can lock it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. They got to be able to inbound the basketball, understanding that NC State is going to go after everything with this full court press. Well, Tennessee. Worst case scenario, it still has three timeouts. So they've got them if they need to use them. And what most coaches do, bring four up. And then it's unpredictable who is going to be long. You can't get trapped. Vescovy in the corner and he calls the timeout. So there's the beauty of having three left in your back pocket. Rick Barnes having the discussion with his veterans about how that was supposed to have played out. Well, Vescovy caught the basketball and held it in the worst possible position. We call it dead man's corner. Because you get it there, the defense can use the sideline and the inline as another defender. If you get it there, you've got to immediately attack the middle or get rid of it. Tennessee 20.3 away from putting this one in the books. Awaka with the 12 rebounds. Meshack chipped in with 11, along with his five rebounds and four assists.
So by the way, James can't move. Finds Ziegler, gets free. 18 seconds. NC State trying to swarm him. Forced the turnover. And Kevin Keats says, do not foul with nine seconds to go. Tennessee victorious once again. And it improves to eight and three and adds another impressive, valuable signature win to its non-conference resume. Tennessee demonstrated that they can win ball games even when Dalton Connect doesn't shoot the ball very well. It was a problem, didn't shoot the ball well when they played Purdue, North Carolina. Today, there were others that were able to step up and also defensively rebounding the basketball. Huge for the Volunteers. 23 points for Josiah Jordan James, 20 for Ziegler, a walk a great on the glass team win for the Vols. They're now eight and three. Hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy Hawaii. For Carolyn Peck and our entire crew, I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long and good night from San Antonio.